Welcome in to the afternoon sports drive on the Triple Play Sports Radio Network. Kicking off a brand new week and kicking off a brand new month. It's March 1st. It's Patrick Wheeler and Zach Lancaster is with me as well. Live from Furniture Showcase here. Sixth and Main in downtown Stillwater. Stillwater's mattress store since 1982. You can get all more, all the info and everything you need to find, uh, you know, in terms of shopping here at StillwaterFurnitureShowcase.com. Uh, big names and mattresses. You'll get the best night's sleep of your life every night with Sealy, Ashley, Serta, Stearns, and Foster, Tempur-Pedic. And I am sitting on one of the most comfortable chairs I've ever sat in in my life. As Zach can attest to, kind of just leaning back getting the feel of it uh it was awesome when they brought it in here they said they they took a look at the two wooden chairs that were here you know just like your basic mm-hmm. chairs and they said to me no 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 we're, we're gonna get you uh well, let, let me get you a better chair and i thought okay well that's fine you know whatever no, i'm not a complainer but this one they brought me as you can see it feels like a mini throne like i feel like i'm i'm keen a furniture showcase over here and i'm really enjoying it. i don't they got you one too right it looks real nice this was just sitting here I know. It I is thought, really I nice. It, here. Yeah. it is really nice. They had me one. It was. I don't think it was that chair, but they they had the last time we were here. It was like a really puffy chair. It didn't lean back. It was just like a stationary chair. Um, but if you could buy it, you gotta buy. It. Oh yeah. My goodness. Like I would recommend coming in and buying the chair out from under Patrick, <laughs> because it just looks really comfortable. If you do. I will not get up until the show <laughs> ends, though. So just saying, you can't have it till I'm done with it. But you can buy it. But you can't have it till I'm done with it. Uh, so yeah, kicking off March, which is kind of incredible if you think about it. I mean, I know it seems like we say this every month, but since 2020 lasted like 20 years, mm. March coming up here in this next season, in this next year is like, well, I think of seasons because of sports, but like this next year with right now on track for a full helping of March Madness, which I can't wait for, obviously, uh, because it got ripped away from us, as most other sports did. Spring training kicked off yesterday, and there was actually fans in the stands for these games. It was fun, man. It was great to see baseball back. And, of course, for Oklahoma State in particular, you got Bedlam in two out of three days. Chapter one, check for Oklahoma State on the road, which, you know, Mm -hmm. we had said that they were going to split games. No, no, if we necessarily thought it'd be on the road, though, where they got their first win. So they're, they play tonight. We'll get to them in just a second. Oklahoma State baseball continues to win. Uh, softball continues to win. They picked up their first loss over the weekend, but came back with a win over La- Louisiana Lafayette, which is number nine in the country. And that was their loss. That was a loss. They lost, then yeah. came back, got revenge the next day, and won. So they're pr- pretty much getting it going. Uh, you know, when I put the report together last night, I was like, well, let me go down the list of all these sports. On. Win, 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 win. Basketball, baseball, softball. The girls' soccer got kicked off again for the spring season. Win, shut out, three to nothing. Cross country, had a great weekend. I mean, you go down the list, and it was just a great Oklahoma State weekend. But, man, Bedlam, I'm telling you what, I was doing wrestling over the weekend with your dad mm-hmm. and, and Jordan, and we were out there and, uh, at the big house, and your dad pulls up the, the end of the game regulation. He goes, guys. Oklahoma State's about to go to overtime. And I'm like, you're kidding me. He looks over, and we're watching the end of, of regulation into overtime, and I'm like, man, I cannot wait uh, to go back and rewatch this game and see how we, exactly we got here. And it's safe to say it was a uh, – an instant classic for yeah. Bedlam Chapter 1. Yeah, so I actually I did a little radio with Colby Daniels before coming in, and he was like, so, Zach, how's uh, – how, you know? And I was like, you know, Colby, this is probably the least Monday of the Mondays I've had since the start of the pandemic last March. Like, beautiful weather, right? It feels really nice outside. Yeah, but, I, but I got to spend – I got to spend my Sunday in Obrate. I, yeah. got, I, got to, I got to cover arguably one of the most – I would venture to say top three most exciting games under Mike Boynton. Um, baseball completes a sweep, you know. Um, I, I mean, I, I don't it, – it, 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 it almost has like a like end of the tunnel feeling, you know. I mean, we, we, we talked about it for, for the past week, and, and I got Colby's feel on it, and he was like, yeah, you know, I think most, most people in the state, most broadcasters, media members in the state had the same – uh, the same sentiment that we did. Like, both both teams were too good to be swept, so you're most likely looking at a split and most likely going to be home-and-home home split. You know, you and, and when Brady Manick hit that layup with less than 10 seconds left, I was like, oh, no. And then, like, almost on cue, Kate turns it over at halftime or at half court, and you're just like, 
great. This is it. This is it. And then luckily the ball, you know, it wasn't enough time to really do anything. And you go to overtime. And and if I'm being honest, I I, I don't really think I felt I don't I don't really felt I didn't really feel nervous no. or worried when it got to when it got to overtime. It was it was one of those things where it was like, okay. well, like there's still a chance, I guess, oh, you could pull it off, but you didn't feel like Oklahoma State was going to lose that game. I mean, it was a uh, 40-point performance, you know, and I, I've I mentioned it a few times. You know, you go back, I think it was a Texas Tech game last week when Fran Fraschella was talking about, well, oh, Cade Cunningham, you know, we, we really need him to, to go off. You know, he can drop 30 points at any time this he wants, and I'm sitting there thinking, like, Fran, have you watched Oklahoma State? Cade's really good, but he has yet to hit 30 points. What are you talking about? And then he goes out there and, and drops a 40-burger. And second player all time in, in Oklahoma State history to score 40 or more in a Bedlam game. Um, I mean, it was, you know, I, I was talking about it, and Colby asked me, he was like, so, you know, do you think we're talking about a repeat performance or who would need to pick up the slack? And I said, well, I think I think OU's going to do absolutely everything they can to try to shut out Kate. You know, I, I, I don't know if they go as far as like a triple team like we've seen at times this year because OSU was playing really, really well. But with what K did on Saturday, I, I don't know if OU could do enough. Like, Cade, he may not hit 40, but Cade is going to get his points. He couldn't miss yeah. the other day. And honestly, if you look at what Oklahoma did in that game, it wasn't terrible defense. No. There were a lot of tough, contested shots that he took Absolutely. that he made. And he got to the line a ton. You know, he mm-hmm. makes 12 three free throws. That's great to see. Uh, but if you go back and watch shot for shot, very rarely did he have a really clean open look. Now mm-hmm. he gets behind the arc, and it really doesn't matter. I yeah. mean, we know that if he's got a if he's one on one behind the three point line, he's going to you can tell right away, literally just watching on television. Okay, he's about to separate here. He's going to cross you yeah. over. Now I know that it's easy for us to see as a defender. You also know that it's coming, but it's almost impossible to get any type of real space. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know close enough to him to close it out and make a nice play on him and even then he's going to hit it most of the time it seems so but with with what he did on saturday uh it was just like i told you my main key to them winning bedlam Mm -hmm. was that he had to be the star that was it that meant exactly what i told you last week was that he had to score a lot of points okay you could have guys play role player that's fine. I didn't expect Dice to be out as as pretty much yeah. everybody didn't. Yeah, uh, I found but, that out Friday. Yeah, but you had other guys, right, that were able to, to come in and step up. And I just think that when he's running the ship like that, and I, I don't want people to think I'm using this word negatively, but he finally was as as selfish yeah. with the ball as we've seen all season. Yeah. And that's fine because we've asked for that. How many times this year? I mean, it seems like every time, every but, you know, he makes up for usually late in games. But every time we're like, dude, be more selfish with the basketball. Like, take more shots. You could tell really from the beginning of that game. And he got a couple of decent looks early until mm-hmm. they brought Harkless in off the bench. And he did a nice job yeah. of at least trying to limit him and contesting him a little bit more, caused some turnovers right with him. Uh, but once he was able to get in that role, the end of regulation where he couldn't stop scoring, continues into overtime. You know, he stays out of foul trouble to where he's able to continue to be out there and be productive. He's hitting shots from everywhere on the floor. Give Boynton some credit because there were times that he again posted him up, posted him up when he saw that he had the advantage. You do have to remember he's, what, 6'8", six, 6'9", mm-hmm. six, whatever he is there. Uh, he's got that ability, too. He can play one through four, and I thought they utilized that pretty well. But it was finally the time this year where you knew okay when we go down the floor with him from the start of this game to the end he will probably get a look here at the hoop he will probably make a shot happen yeah. even if he misses we saw a number of guys make good you know awesome plays on extra chances uh, I know that it wasn't a good game by any means really scoring the ball for Caleb but he had the biggest one of the biggest plays yeah. in the entire game by chasing down a really long rebound which, by the way, saying that with him, that one play right there, to me, shows where he's come this season, how far he's come yeah. from where he began this season. Because earlier on in the season, first few games and even past that in the conference play, that Caleb Boone doesn't chase down that rebound. No. Well, and you look at I, 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 the fact that he remained controlled in that situation. You know, like Brady Manick, that was a panic dive. Like, uh, there's no question that Brady Manick is is a top player in the Big 12. You know, he's he's been on a uh, – he's really struggled uh, since setting out with COVID. 
but there there's no question you know like if, if he comes up with that no one's surprised but you look at Caleb and and he you know if Caleb dives for that he's most likely you know either diving on top of Brady Manic or he's knocking the ball out while also getting a foul um so the fact that he you know not only does he stay level-headed come up with a rebound but then hits probably two of the most clutch free throws that he's had in his short time in Stillwater knocked them both down because if you miss one of those or god forbid miss both of them you're probably not going to overtime and it wasn't just Kate like I said it was we saw on display the depth of that team yeah Bryce okay. Bryce finally right. coming back was huge when Cade does drop in 40 like that mm-hmm. now again I don't know how many more performances we're going to see like that uh this season that was just unbelievable really when you look back at what he did and with the double double but when he's at that level, and even a guy, like, if, if he puts 30-plus in, has mm-hmm. an upper 20s night, that's great. Because the depth of this team was on full display. Again, you didn't have a great performance by any means from Caleb or M.A., yeah. but you had other guys step up and fill the gap. And it goes back to what I've been preaching since the beginning, before the season even started, was that once OSU's guard play kind of cemented themselves, uh, you knew that you were going to be able to pull games out like this because you had – I didn't necessarily expect Bryce to have – the season like he's had you know he's had a few down games absolutely Mm -hmm. but this game that he had here he couldn't miss from three I mean that was huge he had a a number of big shots there Rondell again stepped up and Avery Anderson has been the hero I mean down the stretch here he has absolutely been the MVP right alongside Cade you know because Oklahoma State look they don't win uh, some of these games that they've won without Avery Anderson's performance that's overall that's offense and defense he's diving for loose balls he's making guys hesitate on shots that they normally wouldn't and he's hitting big shots on the offensive end and oh by the way he's doing this lately with no Isaac likely yeah I mean I think that's huge ice when and I don't know like if Cade isn't here this year and ice is down right now I'm not sure where this Oklahoma State team is but with everybody stepping in like they have to fill in the gap. Yeah. And I think, again, Avery's done the best job because he's doing some of the things that you miss without ice, right? You miss the the loose balls and the rebounds and all this extra stuff and the scoring. Avery's taken on that role, and he's just run with it. And I can't say enough about what he's done. And he's been a huge part of why Oklahoma State is now, by the way, I mean, mentioned uh, AP poll came out today, the number 17 team in the country. Highest, uh, that's the highest they've been ranked since 2014. Yeah, that's awesome. And OU, right uh, right in front of them at 16, they dropped down. So there, so you have that, and then this will be the first, uh, first top 20 uh, Bedlam matchup since 2005 yeah that's pretty which is incredible why yeah i know and I, I i when i saw that number two I was like, 16 oh, years that's that's unbelievable and you know what i wasn't even in high school yet right right <laughs> old man over there <laughs> back in my day we had different that bed off my lawn <laughs> i what i loved about this matchup was that you came in regard it's just like every other mm-hmm. bedlam you could have one versus two here in the country it wouldn't matter Absolutely. You throw it out the window, and you know both teams are going to go at it. I think, first of all, and I, you know, I'm always going to find, you know, where can Oklahoma State improve? I thought it was a great game. You know, you're able to go into overtime and win at Norman mm-hmm. against a top 10 team. That's a great win, however you yeah. slice it. 20 turnovers. At this point, I'm just like, you just have to accept. I'm it. like, hey, if they're going to turn it over 20 times and end up winning in overtime, fine. I'll I'm not going to complain yeah, anymore. I'll take you'll, it. You'll hear me complain when we turn it over 20 times and lose again to a team like TCU Absolutely. or something like that. If you can get this team to play like they did overall offensively, even with that, and you, like I just said it last week, at this point, you take what Cade does too. Mm-hmm. If Cade turns it over, I forgot his number now, but if he turns it over, six, yeah, it's something like that. And I think it was six. That's I, yeah. I hate to say it, but it's kind of become the norm to see him do that. And I, I mentioned – Last week, you know, it looks like there are, are times where he doesn't give it up quickly enough because there's so many times like Kate, I understand he wants to take it down the floor. He wants to get inside the lane. Man, if he were to give it up early, he's going to get it right back. Get a couple defenders off of you, take a step, and you got the ball, and you're good to go. Once he gets that down, mm-hmm. it'll be even better. But look, if he's going to pour in 40, I'm not going to complain too much about six turnovers. No, and that's something that, you know, we we, we wanted to see that first half explosion. You know, and, and we finally got to see that the past few weeks. You know, he turns it on early in the first half. And, you know, and, and to go back to what Tom has been saying, you know, you look at you look at Cade and and he's been really really good. You know, he's scoring anywhere between 15 and 25, 26 points a game. 
you know, he's he's good for three to seven assists. He's going to get you, you know, six to 12 rebounds every single game. He's just spectacular. You look at this game against OU, he had one assist. I will gladly take one assist. If, if Cade's going to drop 40 points and they're going to secure an overtime win over a top 10 team in the country, and he's going to score 40 and he's only going to have one assist. He's not going to create for everyone else. I will take that every single day and twice exactly. on Sunday. It's like you know, when you score 40 points, usually you're not going to have a ton of assists. Now, no. if you do, that, that just means you're having a heck of a game. We see that happen <laughs> right? in the NBA occasionally. Yeah. But still, it, it means that you're out there and you're getting yours, and it was like a flip switch uh, switch flipped with him. Well, did you, see the, did you see the end of the game too? Like the last, like the last bit of the second half and then into overtime, um, he took a shot uh, and he had split his lip. He had a chunk of skin hanging down on the end so his mouth was all bloody the whole time i mean that that's an intense look and and so many times people have pointed this out and i have too because you see it in the Mm -hmm. interviews you see it in what he does off the floor that he already has that professional vibe about him but i love seeing at times when he does get pumped up and he lets that emotion show and we saw that in overtime a couple times where he's pumping the fist and he makes a big play or he or one of his teammates makes a big play and he's like let's go and it's like he this is a guy that has never experienced bedlam yeah. ever before in his life and he flips the switch that hey it's bedlam i better turn it on i better go for 40 i thought it was one of the better individual performances i've seen in a mm-hmm. long time again because of the the toughness of the shots that he took even when he was missing it didn't get him down at yeah. times. He would get the ball right back. He knew that he was good enough to make plays happen. And we saw that once he entered that, that free throw line area, right, that jump shot mm-hmm. area, he's, he's taken those shots all day. Yeah. And I think that's something that a lot of times, especially with today's basketball players, it's three-point or die. Well, Cade is, let me, let me shoot threes. I will get inside. I will penetrate. I will go from the free throw line. I can pull up on you at any time. I've got a great runner. And then we know how he can drive and get to the yeah. hoop and finish through contact. That's why right there, all that is why he's touted so highly as an NBA prospect. You know, they talked, I remember I was watching it and they said they were talking to the guy, mm-hmm. by the way, they might as well just bring in the NBA scout guy and be part of the broadcast every single time Oklahoma State plays. He'll be on there tonight. They'll yeah. bring him on. And he'll you know, talk at least 10 minutes. They'll bring him on <laughs> and then he'll say the same thing. He'll say, I've got an A here. I've got an A here. And then they said uh, on Saturday, hey, where would you put uh, kind of a negative mark on Cade so far where NBA looks and, and they go defensive intensity? And it made me laugh. I was like, <laughs> who cares? You right? think that NBA scouts actually care what you do defensively? Right it's it's all about scoring, man. It, it, you don't even have to be that good of a defender. If you can score uh, you know, a lot, you're going to play in the NBA. I'm yeah. telling you, that's just how it is. So I thought that made me chuckle. But I, I think that to win this game, mm-hmm. And by the way, so I'll go ahead and give my prediction. I'm, I'm usually not a guy, Zach, that's willing to flip, but I think I'm going to flip. I said that they were going to split, and I was pretty adamant about that. They're not split. Let no. me jump on the sweep. Yeah. Let me jump on the sweep. I think that it's going to – and we could see a completely different Oklahoma team. We really could. I mean, they could come out with a different game plan. But you look at what they did defensively. They did not play that bad at all defensively. You forced 20, 20 turnovers. Cade was locked up. It seemed like a lot of the time he just got shots to go in, yeah. and he's that good. So you can only do so much. I think that for Oklahoma State, though, defensively, the way that Austin Reeves, how many times he was able to drive to the hoop, yeah. you got to stop that. Weak side defense has to come over and help because he's good. There's no way he should have been driving as much as he did and getting Mm -mm. good penetration and scoring down low like he did. Absolutely no way. The other thing is I want to see Caleb step up here. Can we get a game where he is getting uh, shots to fall, where he is having a chance to to actually make much more of an impact offensively in this one? He or M.A., I'd like to to be Caleb because the way that he's taken over Mm -hmm. that sort of role this season, can he bounce back here? If not, then we're going to go back to the whole he's still inconsistent thing, which I don't want him to be. But you need really solid performances mm-hmm. here because, again, I'm not sure. I'm like you. I'm not sure Cade can drop 40 again. Right. If he's up in the, the 30s, that's another heck of a game. I if, mean, if Cade drops, if he goes out and drops 40 tonight, yeah. they'll win by 20. Yeah, that's and, right, and that's yeah. and that's the, like I'm with you. You know, like I I expected a home and home split, but the fact that Oklahoma State went down and I I, I understand the argument of well, it wasn't an upset. You know, you look at OU and they they got beat by Kansas State and and they're struggling and they're not good and this OSU team is 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 underrated and they're overlooked and this and that. It was an upset. You went on the road to a hostile environment. 
to for Bedlam and you knocked off the number seven team in the country. That's an upset. I don't care who it is. And you know what's funny is a lot of the people that are like, I don't care about the ratings. Well, guess what? That little tiny seven next to Oklahoma, mm-hmm. it actually means a lot when you go back. And OSU work. jumped. What was that? From uh, 28 spot, yeah. nine spots. Yeah, nine spots. That's it, by beating them. Yeah. We look back in, in a couple weeks when they're on selection Sunday and we go, oh, remember when they beat number seven, yeah. Oklahoma, and they were unranked. And now all these people that don't like the rankings, which I hear plenty of all day mm-hmm. long. Oh, well, that's a good win right there. They got that little seven. Next. Yeah, it actually does mean something. Yeah. You look at it. And I never like I didn't expect I didn't expect OSU to win. I, I, I knew they could. But like I, I expected like three spots, two two to three spots. I expected them to be in the the top twenty five. I didn't expect nine, I and agree. even even with the win, I agree. I didn't expect nine. Like I maybe twenty one, twenty at the highest. Um, but you look at you look at how Oklahoma State got that win, and you're right. You know, OU played they played solid defense all night, and it wasn't just like sloppy turnovers. I mean, they forced turnovers. You know, Cade got his pocket picked like three or four times, like embarrassingly. Um, the the way OSU won that game and the way they're playing right now, I, I expect Long Kruger to have his team ready, but with it be, with what they did, with it being senior day uh, or one-year freshman day, however you want to look at it, with, with the fever pitch that the fan base is at right now, I, I can't I can't see OU coming in and, and beating OSU tonight. It could happen, you know, but I, I don't see it happening. Yeah, and this is an Oklahoma State team that, like we've said, you know, at times that they've played this season, I'd put them up against a lot of mm-hmm. teams. I really would. Now, at times that they played bad enough, if that happens, they could get stomped. But they're, tr- again, trending the right way here. I Heck, Baylor lost over the weekend to Kansas. They ain't the I, same team I, I as they lo- were. I would love to see, and I, we're going to see it here coming yeah. up shortly, Oklahoma State and Baylor. How's that going to shake out? I really wish, like, I understand that OSU's playing tonight, but I wish that OSU had the Tuesday game against Baylor. Ah, uh, yeah. I want, I want as close to that right. loss of Baylor as I, I don't, I don't want to wait a week to have to play Baylor three or four days. I want Baylor now because this is the time you want to play Baylor. <laughs> yeah. I told Jordan and, and your dad over the weekend, I said, man, I, I don't want Baylor to go under. I'd love to see them like get a loss obviously mm-hmm. on the year, but not can like anybody, but Kansas, man, I never want Kansas to win anything ever. And they happen to get it done. Man, it's so frustrating, this Kansas team, because I, I, I don't like to see them win, but they're not a good basketball team this year. They're really struggling, but they've secured wins that, that almost le- legitimize their season a little bit. Like, oh, well, this it's still Lawrence. It's still Allen Fieldhouse. Like, yeah, but when when you're talking Allen Fieldhouse, and I, I, I get they beat OSU, but – Allen Fieldhouse with 20,000 screaming compared to Allen Fieldhouse with less than 4,000. That ain't Allen Fieldhouse. That's not beware the fog. I mean, this team is just, <laughs> I just, I don't get it. But yeah. um, I, I'm, I'm excited for what this Oklahoma State team is doing right now. Um, and depending on how this night goes, like I, 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 I don't want to say that I was worried about having to go to Morgantown and going to, going to Waco to end the season. But if they can if they can find a way to knock OU off again tonight, then I'm a hell of a lot less worried about Morgantown and Waco than I was a week and a half ago. Tip off at 8 p.m. tonight on ESPN Bedlam Chapter 2. Cannot wait for that. We'll have more on that coming up later in the show. Uh, up next, we'll take a look at Oklahoma State baseball mm. sweeping Illinois State over the weekend. Zach was there in person, saw the beautiful Obrey <sighs> Stadium on uh, yesterday, right? Yeah. Sunday. So yeah. uh, we'll get what his thoughts about what he saw there. And uh, that, that's coming up next. We're live here at Furniture Showcase. This is the Afternoon Sports Drive. Whoa. Staring as I go. Sports Drive, Triple Play Sports Radio Network. Patrick Wheeler, Zach Lancaster. Furniture Showcase is the location here in downtown Stillwater. Everything you need, entertainment centers, mattresses, uh, tables, chairs, plus lamps, all kinds of stuff they have here. 
furniture showcase and it's great quality the best prices you'll find you don't have to go to okc you don't have to go to tulsa you can get your shopping done locally here at furniture showcase do you know how big of a pain in the butt it would be to one have to spend exorbitant prices in the city but then two have to pay those prices to get your furniture delivered from the city Ugh. because like we're an hour we're an hour from oklahoma city we're an hour from tulsa i can't imagine the delivery fee well you're already spending more money on your furniture depending on you know what brand you yeah and you can't go there and get anything i'm telling you because spent the weekend in okc and driving around there it's a nightmare you might as well i mean i wanted to pull my hair out the entire time it's a disaster it's a nightmare so you come over here stay in stillwater free in-town delivery nothing else and it's possibly cheaper want. prices and high quality name brand everything what a place somebody who's gonna need a, a large jj moving, a large moving truck give him a call and or plane <laughs> it's jj watt as he is on his way to drum roll the arizona cardinals out of all teams wasn't on the list there zach you know um when i when i first saw when i first saw the news it was someone this is just some local sports guy that i follow and all he said was cardinals not the cardinals or arizona it was just cardinals question mark and i'm like cardinals like st louis wonder what's going on here and then i see a tweet from jj watt and it's him doing squats and it's uh source me <laughs> you know and i'm like <laughs> great way to put it this can't be real like i had I, I had a double i like double taked you know and had to had to check to make sure it was actually his account and i wasn't getting fooled by one of those weird emojis barry mccockner yeah you know so i had to figure <laughs> out if it was actually him and sure enough like of all the teams that we discussed and all the teams that we thought could be like I, I I really am curious now to hear what he has to say about potentially buying the house in Cleveland. Like that had to have been fake now. Um, and then you saw the, the, the graphic, I don't know if you did, but I, the graphic going around today of uh, obvi- apparently now it's fake, uh, but a JJ Watt Peloton account. Yes. And it was like <laughs> the, the best one I saw because it had was it Green Bay, Cleveland and, and Buffalo. Buffalo. Yeah. And then uh, actually it was actually Colby Daniels retweeted that and he was like, um, boy, I can't wait for the I can't wait for the, the the unveiling for him to choose between the hats like a commitment ceremony like Arizona was like I, I, his I think his former defensive coordinator is there. Uh, from like 2011 to 13 or 12 to 14 or something like that. So he's back with his defensive coordinator. Yeah, Vance Joseph, yep. But, like, I just – it's so far out of left field. And I, I – with what you text or what you sent to me on Twitter after I sent you the message, like, that's – that that would have to be – like, that would have to be it. Like, Arizona is so desperate they're willing to pay him whatever he wants and no one else was. Yeah, with the numbers that he's getting, you know, thirty-one million, he's guaranteed. I think uh, what twenty-one of that, I think so, twenty-three yeah. million guaranteed out of that thirty-one. I'm not sure he was going to get a deal any better than that. Mm. I told you that before. I figured, okay, JJ, he's going to have to decide, and ultimately, he's most likely going to have to take a for, for, for him pretty yeah. small contract on a championship caliber team that meant a buffalo or a tampa or even a kansas city or green bay something like that made a lot more sense now when you look at arizona yes vance joseph i mean that's huge right he gets to reunite with him chandler jones who is an absolute beast on that defensive line right he is uh who's on the other side yeah, and, and that's what I said to DeAndre, you as well. DeAndre Hopkins. DeAndre, who was absolutely yeah. involved in this, he, he said, hey, come on over. I, you know what he said? He said, come on over. I did it. <laughs> and look what happened. <laughs> the, the Texans had four wins. Uh, oh, now, we man. may have not had the season we wanted, but, hey. Well, you, you would have to think that if you look at how, you look at how that team played uh, for a majority of that season, like, they seemed like they were right on the cusp, right? So you would have to think that moving forward this upcoming year that they would have to do better. Like the, 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 the future looks more bright than obviously Houston. Well, it is, well, yeah, because they have weapons and the part of it, look, the Kyler Murray, I mean, I think he has an incredible future in the NFL. Yeah, just needs to mature. He has to stay healthy. 
Uh, man, but but I think we've seen a lot of signs that he's going to be great before it's all said and done. You have DeAndre Hopkins, and on, not just Chandler Jones. I think Buda Baker is mm-hmm. part of the future there, too, on the defensive side for Arizona. He made some huge plays this season. Uh, but you add J.J., who – by any means is not an every down player anymore we know that but he's going to fill in nicely and i'm telling you yeah in case anyone doesn't know deandre hopkins loathes the houston texans all you gotta do is check his social Mm -hmm. media like recently he just mouthed off about them about what he got traded for which was nothing right and that they compared you know they looked at the numbers he put up in his first year in arizona and it's true it's absolutely unbelievable still to this day and he said to jj hey Forget that trash organization over there in, in the Texans. They're not even going to have Deshaun Watson to start the season. You're coming over here with me. We're going to come. You're going to come to Arizona. You're going to ask for a release. Kyler's our guy. Cliff Kingsbury gets it done on the offense. I'm going to ball out on the offensive side. Oh, and then Vance Joseph, remember him? Yeah, you remember him. He's going to come over here, and we're going to have a great season defensively. Now, I think that. He. It was surprising to me. Is again, I thought that at this point, if Green Bay, or if Kansas City, or Buffalo, or or Tampa Bay were to say, "Look, we'll give you a, a one-year, two-year deal, but it's only going to be ten million a year. It's only going to be twelve million a year," that he would have been like, "Yep, if I want to win the Super Bowl, that's it." Because I don't think the Cardinals are quite there yet. But man, you look at that division. And if Russell Wilson stays right, I mean, you've, the only hole you have is the Niners. You don't know who's going to be quarterback there. If it's Jimmy G, then they're still not all that scary. But you look at that division, man, it just keeps continuing. Mm-hmm. It just continues to get more and more competitive. And I can't wait to see what he does uh, against those quarterbacks in that division. It's going to be a lot of fun to watch with the, you know, maybe. We've seen it before, and I know he's older and he's got injury problems. But a change of scenery like this, and he just goes out there with the limited snaps that he plays, and he makes a huge difference, and he's recording sacks, and it looks like old J.J. I think there's that potential here. I, I, I like this fit the more that I think about it. I never really considered them. Again, my main reasoning being I thought that he would want to say, I want to win right now. And I don't know if he if he's going to win in, in Arizona, but they're still a long shot at a Super Bowl. I think it's probably – He's probably medically referred out there, you know, like they say, if you're old, you know, move to the desert. It's good for your joints. There's no humidity out there. You know, yeah, it's 112, but it's a dry heat, you know, like it's very possible. Not saying that like I, I'm J.J. Watt and I'm going out there because my doctor told me it's good for my hips. Um, but it's possible we could see a bit of a rejuvenated J.J. I'm not saying he's going to get back to recording, right. you know, 15 sacks and, you know, but but it's it's possible yeah. that that dry, arid desert well, could and, aid uh, in all that. Rejuvenation comes from, again, not having to be out there every single snap. You know, Plus, you, have you been have you been to Houston? Have you been to one time? Did you have you been to their stadium? Uh, yeah, I was back there at the uh, the old Minute Maid. At the, oh, at baseball. so you weren't yeah, even not football. Yeah, so it's we we went down for the uh, we went down for the the Texas Bowl a few years ago, and it was a terrible drive. Mm-hmm. Like you're in the middle of nowhere. Like you're like industrial park. It was. Ugh. Yeah, it was went yucky. down there and saw Roger Clemens. That'd be fun. It was awesome. That'd be fun. The, you know the the killer bees when mm-hmm. they played they played in St. Louis one time. Oh, I I was young, so I don't remember yeah. a ton of it, but I remember that it was cool. Uh, yeah. So Levi, let me bring you in here real quick before we hit break. I know you, you got to be dying here to give me some words about about JJ. So he's over in Arizona. How much of this was Nuke Hopkins saying, "My boy, get on over here. We're gonna do something special." Uh, I think it had to do a lot of new Hopkins. I mean, he was just like, "Please come here. We face uh, we face Houston in Week Six. Come on, we can just we can just wreck them a little bit." And uh, I think that definitely helped out a little bit to always stick it back to your former franchise. But I think. Uh, if you go matchup wise, this is the toughest division to truly get yeah. a win in the NFL. And I mean, for some people, you could put uh, Arizona uh, anywhere in that division from one to all the way at the bottom at four, depending on how things shake out. Because 
even though Jimmy G is not the best option at QB, that defense we've seen, that defense uh, led San Francisco to a Super Bowl. So mm-hmm. if everybody's healthy, it could be a completely switch around for San Francisco. But I do like the fit. Now it's going to be interesting to see if the Cardinals can now put a lot of more people around Kyler Murray to see if you can keep him protected. Uh, but I really do like the fit of J.J. Watt to Arizona. It's just weird because it was so obtuse to what everybody thought it was going to be. Yeah, and I think that's absolutely the case. And you know, we went down. I remember a couple of weeks ago when we had the news. You know, he was gonna mm-hmm. he was gonna get his release. We went down a number of teams that probably seemed like the most likely fit. That weren't it. Didn't throw Arizona in there. Um, so I and I'm looking at this right now. Since 2012, nobody has more sacks than the Cardinals' brand new tandem of Chandler Jones and J.J. Watt combined there. What is so, how old is he? Thirty. He's thirty-two, I believe. Thirty-two, thirty-three. Yeah, so yeah thirty-two. I mean, so he's got a little bit left. No, it, it, that's the thing. It's not like the the tank like is completely. You look at him. He's thirty-one. You look at him, and he still looks like a beast. It's just that position and how much wear and tear he's put on his body by playing that position mm. uh, keeps him out. And I can understand it. But if he's in a limited fashion here with this Arizona team. And by the way, the coaching staff seems to be fairly competent, unlike it was, especially towards the latter of his career in Houston. The ownership seems to be in a much better spot. Uh, Again, it's like Levi said, the competition just ramped up too. Mm -hmm. I mean, you are going in this one with all these quarterbacks that you're going to have to pressure, uh, again, given if Russell Wilson stays there. So Mm -hmm. that's kind of, you put an asterisk next to that. We'll get more on him later. Maybe. Uh, But I I think he's accepting the challenge. That's what it is. I think maybe there's potential... I think that this could really turn into an Indomitian Sioux type situation where at least for an Indomitian Sioux this past season for Tampa Bay, he was really able to rejuvenate his career. And weirdly enough, it was playing the most snaps out of everybody which I know that sounds weird because J.J. Watt truly feels like he's rotten his legs and knees out for how long he's played with Houston but I think it's just kind of the Houston scheme that they've ran in and I think if the Arizona Cardinals are smart and they use him in the right spots you could potentially see J.J. Watt not anywhere near whenever he was top of his prime and best in the league but you can still see him as a high caliber player torturing a lot of guys in that division so buy or sell 10 years after his career double knee and hip replacements <laughs> I think it's probably a given man he's uh he's gone through it and he's gonna feel a lot of that for a long time but he's super tough dude i love jj watt man he he's so fun to watch and i can't wait to see he him and chandler jones on that line Whew. Mm. You, you know when the cardinals ultimately you know inevitably do stall out on drives again this season because that's just you know they're, they're gonna do that at times uh and kyler's gonna become human again at times they're going to need to get stops. You know, and again, I think you throw Buda Baker in on that and the other talent they've got. Whew, that's uh, This is a Cardinals team that a few years ago was pretty irrelevant, and they've bounced back uh, overall here uh, offensively and maybe now defensively. I can't wait to see what that does for them in this division. J.J. Watt the newest Arizona Cardinal. When we come back here on the afternoon sports drive, buy or sell coming up, uh, and we'll get more on the Russell Wilson drama as it continues to evolve. Is he going to stay in Seattle? Maybe now that J.J. Watts over there, he says, I got to prove myself. I'm a J.J. rushing at me. I'm going to prove that I still got what it takes. We'll talk about that coming up. This is the afternoon sports drive on the Triple Play Sports Radio Network. And I don't know. Welcome back in Afternoon Sports Drive, Triple Play Sports Radio Network. Patrick Wheeler and Zach Lancaster. This doesn't feel like a Monday. Doesn't, you know? It feels like a Thursday. Just like a, yeah, it feels like you were knocking on the door of the weekend. It feels like a mid-May a, Thursday. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. Love it. Because we've got so much going on. Round two of Bedlam tonight. Mm, can't wait. I, I'm actually, yeah, I would be okay with, and that's just me personally, mm-hmm. sticking with the norm of let's go back to back, you know, two out of three days Bedlam. I'm fine with that. I, I like I, it. Colby asked me about that. He yeah. said, he was like, what, what are your thoughts on back to back? And I said, you know, 
I, I don't I, I don't want it, like moving forward like Oklahoma State no you need to get with the Big 12 and they need to schedule Bedlam two out of three games or two out of four ga- days or whatever because like that's what like the, if you go back to I think it was J- J- January 16th the same June July uh, January 16th I think was the original Bedlam in Stillwater these are two vastly different teams yeah, this isn't time. the same Oklahoma State team this isn't the same OU team like I, I get that they, they they got beat by Kansas State and then OSU turned around and beat them, but this is still a really good OU team, uh, and Oklahoma State is playing their best basketball. Like if you play that game in January, like the outcome is, and I understand that it was the game in Stillwater, you don't get that same matchup. Mm-hmm. It it it's just a not. I don't I don't think that game is anywhere near as fun and entertaining. So I want to see the Big Twelve schedule Bedlam back to back towards the end of towards the end of February from here on out i like it at the end of the year as well because if you did back to back at the end of the year Mm -hmm. then you always do have that rare chance that you get to meet up again in the big 12 tournament yeah and it may become more of a norm there where you get three matchups in the same month now it's even better this these two teams like you said because you've got two now top 25 ranked teams going at it uh you go into Mm -hmm. overtime in the first matchup you're just coming off that you know, Katie, like I said, drops a 40-piece, so that's always exciting. You see what he's going to do in the next one. I just think there's so much excitement for these games to be back-to-back basically like this. Uh, and the other part is you don't get a ton of time to go back and look and figure out what you did right, what you did wrong, like you normally would another yeah. opponent. It's you better study film as much as you can here. You're not necessarily going to get any type of like full practice like you mm-hmm. normally would. It's one day off. Get your mind right. Get rested up as much as you can. You're right back into it. Well, and and you get like you're forced to have to try to play your best basketball because exactly Oklahoma State knows what they're going to get with OU, and OU knows what they're going to get with OSU, and so like what like I, I'm I'm so curious as to what type of performance we're going to get like because like you like we've been saying like oh you didn't play bad like their offensive performance was really good I mean they scored 90 points you know I mean how many to you go through their schedule how many times have they scored 90 this year I, I'll close say that hit 90 yet you know and and they forced 20 turnovers so I mean they played a really solid game but you have Cade Cunningham and drops 40 like I want to know what else Oh, like what else? Oh, you can do. Yeah. Like this game tonight. Like I don't. I don't know if it's going to be as exciting as the overtime game on Saturday, but this game has the potential of being just as exciting. That's what I'm saying is that there's sometimes players that are like, okay, they have really good performances, and you can say, okay, here's what we're going to do next time to let's let's adjust here and try to limit. Well, with a guy like Cade, he's one of a handful of guys in all of college basketball where you can say that, and you can certainly try it. But it's probably not going to work. Mm-hmm. Now you, you you're going to say Oklahoma's coming in and like let's force Bryce Williams to be the one to beat us. Let's force Avery Anderson to be the one to beat. Well, again, usually that you can get away with that. A guy like Cade, it's just not as easy, and they know that. So yeah, I can't. I'm, that's one of the most interesting things I'll be looking for as well is how they choose to attack him, uh, and maybe even say, hey, let's do what we did last game. Yeah. And there's let's just hope and pray there's no way right he's gonna make all of those contested shots like he did last time out there's just no way if you're OU though like I think that's where you take your chances right you you have to look at it and say I I would rather double up Cade every chance he gets and force him to either make highly contested shots and and allow everyone else to pick up the slack than to do the exact and and that's the thing is like it's not like they weren't defending him well on saturday but if they don't put two on him like i i would rather take my chances of doubling up kate and force everyone else to have to pick up the slack than you know play a lockdown defense and only have harkless on on kate and well we'll we'll just play him tough because um you know we we did a good job and there's just no way he's gonna make those shots like kate's proven game in and game out that he is going to make his shots and so i i would rather rely on well we're going to double up Cade, and we're going to force bryce to take those shots we're going to force avery anderson to try to make those acrobatic layups we're going to force caleb boone we're going to force if he's on the court isaac likely that's if if i'm ou that's the approach i'm taking and our number two here let's get into some buy or sell 
you buying? I'd buy that for a dollar. Or are you selling? You pick up the phone and you sell, sell, sell. This is Buy or Sell on the Afternoon Sports Drive. Make money, money, make money. Buy or sell afternoon sports drive, triple play sports radio with Patrick Wheeler and Jeff Lank. Uh, Jeff, yeah, Jeff. Zach Lancaster. We sounded like. I, I did that to Jeff a couple of times too. I said, wait, what is that? I'll confuse, like, if, when me and dad are hanging out, I'll answer his phone to try to confuse mom and see how long I can go while having the conversation. Because, like, I catch myself, I like, I have the same idioms and the same deliveries. And I'll like when I answer when I answer a phone, I, I feel like I answer it like my dad does. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> you know, so I try to I try, I try to like if or like if I call my like if I'm with my dad on my mom calls, my his mom calls my grandma. Uh, I'll try to con- like I, I once went 15 minutes talking to my grandma and she thought I was my dad the whole time. Zach, I have I have dealt with so many Lancasters it seems like this <laughs> over this Yo, year. My brother's down the road. I might as well just He's go. on the north side of town. You want me to bring him in? Uh, yeah, might as well. Okay. I just get you guys, you know, all mixed up. You run together. Well, well it'd be really tough because uh, Jeff Lancaster, right? Yep. I'm Zach Lancaster, yep. and my brother's name is Jackson Lancaster. So you have the J <sighs> as Jeff, and it rhymes Jack and Zach. <laughs> so, like, my mom will roll through. Like, she'll go through the roll. It's awesome. Here, here, here. All the men in the house. Here. Just come. <laughs> <laughs> Levi, what, what was that? Do you have something to say? I heard I heard you in there. Levi said, uh-uh. Okay, I guess he doesn't. I thought, I thought he <laughs> we're probably watch. We're not even connected. Yeah, stuff. right, right. And he's sending yeah. back. Okay. I, I heard well, you guys about? I was like, well, I'm going to get. let him say what he'll say. Yeah. All right, uh, all right. You know, that or he's eating Chipotle. That could have been it, too. He's got a mouthful of burrito. <laughs> okay, speaking of burrito, yes. buy or sell uh-huh. that Cade puts up another 30-plus burrito tonight. 30-plus. Mm. I didn't go 40. I stayed low at 30. Um... Man, I don't want to be eviscerated if I disagree with it, um, but I'll sell it right because um, I, I I certainly don't want to say that Cade's forty plus or forty points on Saturday was an anomaly, but if you're looking through his stat, like Cade is certainly he is he's capable of doing it game in and game out, but he hasn't hit thirty yet. Like that was his first thirty plus. Um, I think he's going to have a really good game. I, I think I think this is going to be more of a, of a. Tr- I feel like it's going to be more of a traditional Cade game. I think he's going to have like he'll get he'll get close to thirty. I, I think he'll have twenty plus easily twenty plus. Um, but I think you're going to see four to six assists. Um, I think you'll see a pretty good amount of rebounds. I think you'll see a couple of steals. Um, but it, it's I I will say like I'll sell it. I'll sell thirty plus. I'll buy 20 to 30, um, but I will say, like, I will not, I, I won't be surprised and I won't be disappointed if he goes out there and has one assist and drops 30 plus. Like, it's it's very capable of doing it. Yeah, and you know, Dick Vitale, uh, I heard him say on the broadcast, like, it was a quiet 20. I'm taking my Dick Vitale voice. It was a quiet 20, like that type of thing. And I'm like, yeah, we've been saying that all mm-hmm. year. Like, that's usually how it is. But at that point, we didn't know he was going to have 20 more in him. Right. Uh, and he exploded. But... I really enjoyed watching him take over. Are, are you are you laughing at my dick vitality? No, I'm actually, okay. Okay. I actually uh, thought of a story uh, that is kind of an inside joke with me and my dad. We uh, big time uh, Galaxy Quest. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Have you seen that movie? Uh huh. Yeah. Where the they they transport the pig from the planet to the to the ship, and he's like, and it exploded. <laughs> like that was. A, he exploded. Yeah. He really did. You gotta be kidding me, baby. I, I do the best Dick Vitale, by the way, which I, I will do it here. I do the best Dick Vitale. Go and do uh, Dick Vitale did, off? Yeah, we'll do it during the break. Okay, we'll do it. Okay. But we'll everyone here at Furniture will be like. I didn't. I was so lost listening to him. Like, I, I really like listening to Dick Vitale, but the dude would just ramble. Yeah. And oh, it was rough. I brought him on. I'm sorry, go ahead. Sh- sorry. I will. I, will. I, I brought I him on our show. Before mm-hmm. you were back here with us. Are you kidding me? Yeah, like my first couple weeks on. And it was great because That's he was, so I got him to talk about uh, Eddie. And he had so, so much, much to say fun. about Eddie, which was awesome. Can you imagine the treasure trove oh, of man. stories that man has to and, tell? And get this, you'll never believe this, by the All way, because right. I'll have to show you the interview. Okay. But he and Tom had a connection. Tom was on with me. Mm-hmm. And they had run into the same coach or something like that. I was like, no. 
Shocker. Tom out of, yeah. <laughs> He's, it was awesome. It was Not awesome. a knock. Yeah, but, so yeah. Uh, he... If, uh, anyone, I, if anyone in that station had a connection... It would be Tom. It'd be Tom. Yeah. With, with just how, you know, with, with how deeply Tom right. has roots right. with Eddie and, and around the, the New York program. area and all that stuff, so... Yeah. And, uh, but I... I I agree that, you know, Dick is, he's a little bit more of a rambler now. And it's hilarious, by the way, uh, if you go to his social media, he, he found out what Twitter was and his Twitter uh, posts are, are just hilarious. He's not a type uh, of dandy anymore. He, had, he was a big Bucks fan. Yeah. But he was watching the, the Super Bowl. I think it was like a week before that or something. Uh-huh. He was talking about the Bucks were giving him uh, heartburn. And he took two, I don't know if you've seen him, two classic pictures. That he's like. He's got the jersey laid over his. No, he, he's taking the selfie. And you know how older people take selfies. Mm-hmm. And he has a bottle of Pepto-Bismol. I saw that. Yeah, the, I saw just, that. I got to get it framed. It's I awesome. Uh, so <laughs> anyways. Anyway. Love, love, love yeah, Dickie yeah, yeah. B. Uh, quiet 20 points. Quiet 20. Yeah, that's my fault. I think he gets up near 30. Mm-hmm. I think it's a high 20 yeah, night. same. And you look, I think it was 10 points in overtime, right, if, I, if I'm correct I on that? so, yeah. So that got him to 40. Now he had to hit the late two. He was sitting at 38 and got two more free throws to close things out. Uh, and a lot of that, you look at those 12 points coming at the free throw line, I think that's another part of what OU is going to try to limit because they saw him, and you know what? That was Oklahoma State as a whole did a lot better job shooting free throws, by the way. But Cade, I think that's part of what OU is going to say. Let's let's not do here is let's try not to foul this guy. Okay, I know it's hard because he drives so aggressively and he gets by you quickly. But let's try to limit our fouls on him so he doesn't get those easy shots. Because guess what? He's going to make his free throws. Let's force him into tougher shots. If it goes to overtime, yeah, then we'll, we can see him crack 30-plus yeah. again. But in regulation, I expected a twenty, a high 20 Tr- night. A traditional game. Yeah, and I'm like you. I, I think the assist number yeah. will be up a little bit. I would love to see the turnovers down. I really would. Uh, and I would say at this point, we're probably sitting here. At a week, of course, we don't know for sure. We're mm-hmm. sitting here probably at a 50-50 chance that ice suits up. I'm sure they'll give it a go again. He's dealing with the finger. He's dealing with the foot. Uh, and warm ups and see how he is, but uh, even with that being the case, it, it's going to be the same story for me. Cade's got to be the star, and if he scores 27, mm-hmm. 28, he's the star. Yeah. I mean, I, it's really going to be. There's been one game this entire season where he wasn't the star that he played in, and other than that, it, it's been his show most of the way. So yeah, I, I'll sell that it's 30 plus, but he's he's going to be get darn close. I'll tell you that. Yeah. So we look at. We, I'm going back. To, I'm going back to Bedlam. Um, you know, we've we've talked to Cade. Um, and and I, I don't think there's any question like this is this is his last home game in Gallagher. He now understands the the intensity and the rivalry that is Bedlam. He gets it. Um, I think he's going to have a huge game, but I'm going I'm going everywhere else on this. Um, so you look at Bedlam on Saturday and there were four double digit um, Cowboys. You had Cade with 40, uh, Avery and Bryce with 15, and then you had Rondell with 11. Um, buy or sell that Oklahoma State has four or more players back in double digits because mm, yeah I, I think that I, I don't think OU is like they're going to come in they're not they're not laying down right I mean you lose sure. you lose two in a row certainly one you shouldn't have lost to Kansas State um, Oklahoma State I think has a better chance than OU at winning this game just based off of what they did on Saturday but I think Oklahoma State needs either Caleb Boone or M.A. to really step up so um, like I said, Cade, Avery, Bryce, and Rondell were double digits. Buy or sell four or more double digits tonight. Ooh, yeah, and I thought, that, again, when I talked about their depth, I mm-hmm. thought that was obviously a huge reason, you know, because you had Avery play another really great game. Bryce, the threes were on, man, and we've seen that multiple times this season. When he starts hitting three-point shots, yeah. that's the type of guard play you want from him. He was 4-10 of ten from the field, and all four of his makes were from three. Which is fine with me. Yeah, you know what? I'll because they were all huge at Absolutely. the time. And you look back, they were down like in halftime, and he hit that three in the well, – Well, they, they all came, right? They all came in second half yeah. and, and in overtime. Yeah, and he hit yeah. the one in the second half that brought him within one. Yeah. And to me, he kind of pulled the Keelan Boone of this game where he officially got him back yeah. out, of the, out of the mini slump there and got him in the right – and they went back and forth, obviously, from there. So Bryce was huge in that one uh, with those – threes so I, I'm gonna buy it I think he stays hot there because mm-hmm. he'll be in double digits Cade was automatic double digits Avery to me right now is yeah. almost automatic double digits so he's gonna get his looks and he man he's a tough finisher too I love the way he gets inside yeah. he can go inside out and you know who my fourth one is I, I'd love it to be Rondell I think it, it could be Rondell again because he's also you know, we know mm-hmm. uh, is nowhere near his ceiling and he's playing lights out still 
I, I'm going to put my faith back in the big guys here, but I'm not going to be definitive. I don't know if it's going to be Caleb or M.A., but I think one of them will find themselves in double digits before it's all sure. said and done here in this one. So I'll buy right at four. Yeah, I, I think it's really possible, right? I think it's very doable. I'll, I'll buy it. I, 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 like, I think you're right. I think you, you got Cade. Um, I don't know what that is. You got Cade and you got Avery. They're going to they're gonna get their double digits. Avery, this was the same style of play Avery had last year, but he just wasn't confident. You know, he, he could get to the rim at will, but he couldn't finish. This year, he's finishing. You know, he's, I, I want to see him limit the turnover or the, uh, the, the fouls. He had two or three really, really bad fouls. Uh, you eliminate those like the, uh, there was a three shot on the, on the far side. Four, you know, made, sunk all three, uh, three, uh, all three free throws. It was, it was egregious. Yeah. Bryce, um, I don't, I don't know if that game was enough to really get him out of that slump. Um, it, it was impressive. There's, there's no question. And those, those three games at, at, at huge times, but I don't know if it's going to be Bryce. Um, and I, I could see, I could see Caleb or MA, one of the two hitting double digits. Um, I'll give it to Rondell. I'll give it to Rondell over. Good with that. I'll give it to Rondell rather than, um, rather than Bryce. Okay. I'm going to stick with Bryce for the moment. Buy or sell tonight. Okay. Four plus threes from Bryce. Oh, man. <laughs> because, I mean, I kind of know where you're going. You didn't give him the double figures there, so it kind of tells me my answer. But I, And that's the thing is, like, you <laughs> le- <laughs> believe I. Um, so. give, let, me, let me pull this up real quick. I've, I've, got, his, I've got his bio right here. Um, you say four or more? Four or more. Um, Gets back at it. I'll sell because that was set, like makes or attempts. Makes. He'll, he'll attempt I'll, four. I'll, I'll he'll sell. A, he'll attempt four. I'll, I'll four. sell because Saturday was the only time he hit four or more. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it came at the right time. I think it was huge because he had scored one point against Iowa State and two against Tech. He had really struggled. Um, and, you know, actually going through it, he's kind of hit or miss. You go to back to the Baylor game, he had 11. And then he had four against Iowa State, six against Arkansas, 11 against TCU, then six against Texas, three against Kansas, then 10 against K-State, then one against yeah, Iowa State. Yeah, he's been State, streaky. Yeah. One, two against Tech, and then yeah. 15 against o, o, OU. So, um I'll sell four or more makes, but I, I think he gets – I think two or three is very doable, mm-hmm. but four would be a stretch, I think. My prop bet would be I would take three, right at three, uh, because I, I think he's going to get his looks mm-hmm. because you're going to have – and I know it sounds crazy. They brought us a lot of pressure on K. They tried to, but you have to think that Long Kruger is going to be like, all right, I, it didn't work all that great, so let's uh, let's go ahead and bump a little bit more. Let's get a little bit more pressure. We'll guess who's going to be open. If they can look Bryce's way and they're feeling confident after what they what he did uh, on Saturday shooting the ball, so I think he's going to hit right at three. If he has more than that, that's going to be a really great game for him because that means two straight games he's feeling it from beyond the arc. But I will say this: I'll throw in a bonus. We're going to see one of his classic breakaway dunks tonight. I cannot wait. I hope so. It's at home. He's going to fire the crowd. He's going to get a chance at a fast break, and he's going to to either dunk over somebody. Mm-hmm. Or he's gonna bend the rim. It's gonna be one of those awesome dunks that he does. I can't wait. He's gonna he's gonna Shaquille O'Neal bring it down. They're gonna <laughs> have to the they're gonna have to bring out yes. a new goal. Yeah, exactly. Get um, it ready. So I'm I'm st- I'm gonna stick with Bedlam. I think it's appropriate to stick with Bedlam, and I might give you a bonus later. Okay. Um, that doesn't have to do with Bedlam, but you look at what Oklahoma State did on the boards in that first game. Oklahoma State out rebounded OU 45 to 28. I mean that's that's a discrepancy you see in like like one of the first two or three non-conference games of the year because you're playing some directional tech you know you're not playing the number seven team in the country so i'm not I, i'm not going to go with you know 45 to 28 again but buy or sell oklahoma state out rebounds oklahoma by at least 10 and i'm not like i won't put a cap on it like are they going to do it by hitting 40 but buy or sell they out rebound by at least 10 hmm, i think i'll buy that uh cade was a big part of that for sure uh, the big guys down low got theirs at times, and I, you know, everybody was crashing the glass. That's what was great to see. Uh, and you had guys chasing down long rebounds too. They were effort rebounds, which mm-hmm. is always a plus. Uh, so yeah, and I think that's going to be the case here. The energy is up. That means, and you know, my boy is saying, guys, I know we just beat Oklahoma. Mm-hmm. It took an overtime to do it. Same thing here. 
we need as many second chances as possible. Absolutely. And that's something that you miss without ice. As we said, when he's not on the floor, the fact that they were still able to do that in that rebounding column to me was even more impressive. Uh, because he wasn't out there to get all that and you had guys sitting on the weak side and how many times have we said multiple times especially for a guy like ma at times like caleb down low a missed shot is the best offense for them yeah because they can get back up and put it right back in i think that's going to have to be the case tonight you don't want to give up uh, too many one and duns against ou because don't get it twisted yeah. i mean they're going to come out tonight firing and every single offense offensive possession if they don't score it's an automatic loss for them i mean that's the mindset they have to have here against oklahoma state so i'll, I'll buy it i think they're going to crash the glass mm -hmm. really hard if they don't don't expect them to win this game yeah i'll i'll buy it i i think they can i, I think they can easily get 10 on ou um i mean you look at Cade; he put up 11 you had ma with 12 um, that that was huge. That that was a big one. You know, you're gonna you're gonna get five plus from Avery, probably gonna get close to five from Rondell. Um, I certain I, I'm with you. I certainly like their chances if you get if you get ice back. You know, if ice is back, ice is good for at least five. Um, and 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 I, I you look at it, and most of them came on the defensive end. That was huge, and, and a good chunk of them came that late in the second and, and into overtime when you have – like one of the things that, that Boynton had mentioned was like we can't put Austin Reese on the free throw line. And so something that I was really, really surprised with was him driving and attempting to draw contact and something that OSU has been really, really bad at are those ticky-tack fouls. And they mm -hmm. were able to avoid a good amount of that from Reeves driving to the to the rim. Um, and you're you're getting you're getting defensive rebounds. So um, I don't know if they put up another 45 plus like they did against uh, they did against OU on Saturday, but I'll I'll buy 10 plus. I I, I like Oklahoma State's chances, especially if Ma and Caleb. You know, Caleb only had four. He was six and four. Um, so I, if Caleb can feel it, can he can get it going at home, and MA can continue, and Avery and Cade, yeah, I'll buy 10. Yeah, I want to see more out of Caleb tonight, no doubt. Absolutely. I mean, he, he had the arguably the biggest rebound of the game, but he's got he's got to do more all the way through. Uh, when we come back here on the afternoon sports drive, Russell Wilson, will he stick with the, the Seahawks or not? I mean, that's been the question. We've had nonstop drama with him and the Seahawks with that huge article that dropped in The Athletic detailing all that information uh we know that he's pretty much sent out four teams that he would like to be traded to mm -hmm. if that does happen we'll get into that all coming up next this is the afternoon sports drive Lancaster live from Furniture Showcase, Fifth and Main, downtown Stillwater. Uh, make sure you come check them out for all your mattress needs, furniture needs as well. Stillwaterfurnitureshowcase.com. Uh, you can go online there and shop. And like, like Zach said, so much easier to get everything done here than going to OKC or Tulsa. Stay local, shop local. Uh, they have some twin, twin beds all the way to extra long singles and California Kings. I mean, if you want the best sleep of your life, just go all in. It mattress is one of those things where you, you splurge on it. You're like, man, it's a it's a very worthy investment yeah. because you're going to literally use it every single night. Get a California King where there's plenty of room. I see these look I look at some of these these California Kings, I'm like, man, that is like just ideal. There's no such thing as too much bed. At least to me. I don't, I don't know. Is that, is that just a hot take? Or? I don't know, man. I'm maybe. I guess furniture I, hot take. I think it depends, though. Like, um, so like my wife and I share a queen, but I don't like. I've I married a snuggler, so I don't have a choice. TMI, in how big, Zach. This is like, a, a family friendly <laughs> show. Like it doesn't matter how big the bed is. Like Andrea will. Andrea will be on my side of the bed. <laughs> there are children. <laughs> like, if we had a California king and I laid on the very edge, she would roll and scooch and she'd be up next to me on the edge of the bed. Yeah, but at least you know she was on her way. I mean, California king, it would be a, a, a distance. You'd yeah. Be like, well, I get a few minutes. Yeah, I'd be like, <laughs> but no, but that's, I, I think it'd be, California king would be fun for, 
um, like a movie day, like lounging around, you know, because then you can you can spread out and you can bring your snacks and and you could you know bust out the PlayStation and all that stuff. Yeah, but, you got the uh, the popcorn in the yeah. left corner. You got the cosmic brownies up in the it's right. It's more of corner. like a. It's more not like it's like a family bed. Not where like you all sleep in the same bed, but like if you had like three or four kids, you uh-huh. could have or two or three kids or something, you could have like a family day. So when you upgrade watching movies and stuff, yeah. and and you and Andrea have your your first child. Mm-hmm. Then we'll, course, we'll work our way up per kid. Then if, I was gonna say, of one, course, one kid will get a yeah, king. One kid means that another one's on the way. Mm-hmm. So when you get up to two at least, yeah, then you can have them all. Yeah, because that's the thing is like we're actually talking about. I know. We're actually talking about having a kid. We got a we got a doctor's appointment later this month wow. and to, to look into things and look at you growing um, up right before my eyes. And we would have two. Like Andrea, she says like if you have one kid, you need to have two kids so have a playmate. It's automatic. Not not because you want two kids, but because that yeah. way your attention can not be on like. You know what? Go play with your brother. Leave us alone. She's smart. Yeah. She's if you have one term. kid, if you have one kid, you have to actually pay attention. She's <laughs> <laughs> and who would want to do that? I know. Right? What in the world? Come on. Uh, you know who? You know who? Wi- be a parent. You know who wishes he would get more attention? Russell, Russell Wilson. Wilson. He, he he would love some that more poor attention. man. Poor man over there in Seattle would love some more attention from the Seahawks. You know what was funny? I saw a tweet today, and it was awesome. It was like old footage of. Bill Belichick and Tom Brady sitting in Belichick's office Mm -hmm. talking to each other uh, about the game plan and Tom Brady was giving him advice on what to do here what to do there all that stuff and and I was like man if only if only Pete Carroll would have realized uh, what he had now here's the thing the Seahawks again don't have any sort of incentive right now to get rid of Russell Wilson no but the more I think about it the more I feel like he's going to end up somewhere else. Why? Because when they have actually thrown out the list of teams, that's like a little sus right there. Because you look at all the teams that he said, and first of all, like he threw out the Bears, which I think was just a complete waste of breath. He's never going to go to Chicago. Chicago knows they're never going to get him. That's where QB careers go to die. We all know that. He's not going to do The Raiders seem like a pretty decent fit because they have an actual offensive line. I still think they need weapons. I don't buy that there's uh, enough weapons there, as people like to say. Um, and you look at everything else that he said with the other teams, I'm just thinking if he's going to throw that out there, he wouldn't just be saying that. Like, there's reason behind this. He he wants out of here. It's not just if I ever happen to get traded. That was a message to Pete Carroll like, hey, I'm gone. Mm-hmm. You need to go, and, and you guys need to figure out uh, where I need to go uh, and what I need to do here and, and tell me where you're willing to send me and then I'm going to sign off on it. Uh, Le- yeah. Levi trying to tell me this boy Darren Waller's only weapon that he that the Raiders need. Not true, Levi, and you know that as a fact. Henry, you kind of need a quarterback to throw to that. Uh, Hen- Henry too. Ruggs is not is – not he hasn't done anything to impress me yet. And they you got to have a good coach too. 20 people. He's yeah. throwing the ball to himself. He's, uh, <laughs> he might as well with the way that Derek Carr plays sometimes. I, I, people are like, Dar- Derek Carr had a good year. Yeah, okay, one good year. Let's all freak out about it. I just – I don't I'm, – I'm, the more I think about it and everything that we read, you know, if you look in that article in The Athletic, a source points out it's connected with the Seahawks and basically says, hey, this is all to save face. What Russ is doing right now is to save face. He thinks of himself as one of the greats in the game. And whether the Seahawks do or not, we're not sure. I feel like that the Seahawks, if they do, they need to make that clear. And I'm not sure that they do. And if they don't, that's their loss. Like, that's Pete Carroll's loss. I, I don't know if he feels like that he's being shown up right now or what the deal is, and he wants to make sure that everyone knows he's in control. But I'm telling you, watching Russell Wilson over the years, he's made throws at times where I've rarely seen any other QB make. He's this still, to me, the best deep thrower in the game. That includes Patrick Mahomes and Aaron Rodgers. He's still the best deep ball thrower to me. And I can see him ending up somewhere else because he's gone this far. It's just he threw the offensive line under the bus. He's thrown out the teams he wants to go to. If he doesn't move, then you're coming back into the offseason. Then what's he doing? Explaining himself to everybody. Yeah, the offensive line, like, why'd you say that? Well, guys, here's, here's what I really meant. Uh, he sits down with Pete Carroll finally. Coach, I want you to forget all this stuff in the offseason. We're going to be fine. You know, we're going to be – we're going to make the playoffs and all this. But these teams that he mentioned, at least for the Raiders too, you could do a clean swap where you send Derek Carr over to the Seahawks. And think about it. Wouldn't he be, the more you think about the Raiders, an excellent fit for the Seahawks? 
because he's a quarterback that you're not going to rely on for huge plays. You're going to say that, okay, we can run the football like we want to here with whoever's going to be our running back. It's not going to be Chris Carson, but whoever it is, we can run the football. We can rely on our defense, hopefully, and we can hope that Derek Carr at times makes plays, uh, big enough plays to, to win us a game every now and again, but we don't have to rely on him every single time like they do with Russell Wilson, basically. I think he's a great fit. So, and think about this. Of course, there were rumors, you know, with the, the Broncos talking about Deshaun Watson. Would you like to see an AFC West with Patrick Mahomes, Deshaun Watson, uh, uh, Russell Wilson, mm-hmm. And uh, 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 why why am I blanking on the, the Chargers quarterback? Why am I blanking Herbert? on Levi? Yeah, Justin, Justin Herbert. Herbert. My goodness. Well, I'm not even an NFL guy, Levi. That's <laughs> over a little here, depressing. I'm over I beat here you losing, that. My, uh, losing my uh, train of thought on this guy. Yeah, but can you imagine? That'd be insane. But I think that, that Russell, I, I just, when the more you look into the story, the more details you learn. Well, it's like every, uh, it's like every three or four days. You know, we go back to, was it? pre-Super Bowl we, we were talking it was either pre-Super Bowl or just after the Super Bowl we were talking about it and you would propose that like could you see him sticking around and I said no I don't think so um, and you were like yeah you know I think I could see it I could I think he probably sticks around yeah I didn't feel it and the I mean it's like every single week first it was he, he's you know blaming his offensive lineman you're kind of wondering like man why would you do that why would you talk about the guys that, that are paid to protect your life why would you do that and then you know, then he then he's talking about this, and now he's saying, oh, "I would approve these. I would approve this trade and this trade and this trade." It seems like every single week, something else comes out, and and I'll, I I think he's out of Seattle before the the June OTAs. If it happens, I could see it happening in the next three or four weeks. Yeah, within a month. Uh, and I just look at the list of teams that he said, okay, and I cross the Bears right off. The Cowboys are interesting because I think Dallas in a heartbeat would send Dak right over and then some first-round picks uh, to get Russell Wilson with those receivers and that offensive line mm-hmm. when it's healthy. The Saints, not going to be able to do it. I just, uh, with the cap issues they have, they still don't know if, if Drew Brees is going to retire. He hasn't given them a definitive answer, and we've seen rumors <laughs> that he's coming back now. There's no way. So, so who knows? I think that the Cowboys and the Raiders make the most – and, again, the Bears, like, not going to be a problem. The, the Raiders and the Cowboys make the most sense to me there, I would, I would guess. Uh, but, man, hey, you look at Dallas. Yeah. How, <laughs> Levi, how great would that be? Dallas sends uh, Dak over. They don't have to worry about paying Dak's giant uh, request. Don't there. talk about how good it is, Levi. You told me on Friday that they would never part with Dak. So <laughs> oh, I don't yeah. want to hear your optimism on this situation. Oh, I don't so have Russell any. Russell Wilson is still any. not going to come over to Dallas? That's what you're saying? Oh, uh, yeah. I don't want to lose 20,000 first round picks for Russell Wilson, who's like. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, he could change the franchise. Come yeah, on. after he gets sacked on the ground because all of our offensive linemen are still old and injured. <laughs> Yeah, they're definitely going to have to make a couple moves there. That's mm-hmm. for sure. It quarterback like there's been so quarterback is the least of Dallas's problems. You have so many more problems <laughs> everywhere else. Yeah, you should be able to re-sign Dak, which should be the easy thing. Then you figure everything else out. Literally, quarterback should be the easiest thing for Dallas. But because Dallas is Dallas and is run by Jerry Jones, it's literally the hardest thing possible. Too true. I think with Russ too. He's real, and when I read that that article about it, when the athletic like he's trying to save face and all this, it mm-hmm. made me think, what has he been like with the Seahawks during all this behind the shadows? Because what we see out there in the open all the time is model athlete, right? Like he's the guy you tell your kid to look up to because he does this right and he does this right, and he never calls anybody out and says anything. You know, I I think that that argument right there frustrates me. Because you get people that are like, you need to be like this guy. You know, he's and, – and I, I, I'm I not knocking Russell Wilson, right? I think he is. A, he's a stand-up guy. He's won the – he's won the, the, the player of the year award, the, the man of the year, excuse mm-hmm. me. Yep. Um, you know, but we look at – you know, like Kevin Durant went about it the wrong way, but we saw it – same thing with James Harden. He went about it the wrong way, but – like Deshaun Watson, when someone is not happy in their situation, I understand that they're making millions and millions and millions of dollars. But all right, let's just use Pete, who's an insurance salesman in Midwest City, right? Pete 
is there for seven or eight years. You know, he's won the employee of the month 15 times. He's he's gone on the, the corporate retreat six or seven times. And and he's the salesman, the insurance salesman of the region four times. Well, maybe he got into a screaming match with his boss. You know, and maybe Pete isn't happy with where he is. Well, Pete, I'm sorry, but you signed a contract, all right? You you have to stay in that Midwest City job and continue to, like, I, you can't go find another job. Like, and if you do leave, then my kid who wants to be an insurance salesman, I, you, you broke his heart. Like, it, it is such a double standard yeah. when it comes to athletes. And, well, maybe Russ doesn't want to be in Seattle, and maybe – Maybe he should be allowed right. to leave. And, and that's like he's been the guy that's built that reputation. So but if he but if he leaves, like I think it's like there will be people out there that say, Well, he he quit. Yeah. You know, he's a jerk now because he, he talked bad about his offensive line and he, he talked bad about Pete Carroll and he wasn't a stand up guy and this and that. Well, the dude wasn't happy. Well let I'm, him leave. I'm, and he has the right to not be happy. Look, I said it a bunch of times, yeah. Pete Carroll's the problem. To Absolutely. Me, he, he's still the problem. He has not, and even this past year, I know Russ ran into a turnover snag, but he didn't tr- show any trust in mm-hmm. him. And if mm-hmm. he really, at the, if it's true that they were sitting there in that meeting and he wasn't listening to anything he said and he just completely dismissed it, yeah. yeah. If you're Russell Wilson, you kind of get that feel now too. Yeah, you're the face of the franchise, dude. You're gonna be frustrated. I get it. I've always fired back on that argument too, by mm-hmm. the way. Mm-hmm. With oh yeah, and I wasn't saying no, it to no. You. I know. I'm just saying like yeah. with the with the you know idea that oh little kids look up to these athletes. And so? for instance, I saw it was this past year, not not uh, 2020, mm-hmm. 2019. We saw videos of Baker Mayfield yeah. and Patrick Mahomes, and it was kind of becoming a trend where athletes were chugging beers and, and at different uh, venues, different mm-hmm. sporting events. And it was all over. You know, everyone with the sane brain was like, guys, nice, yeah, good job. You know, they're being athletes, they're being people, mm-hmm. awesome. And you know, all these people are like, that's just a terrible You're a role example. model. For, they're they're twenty year old yeah. superstar athletes. Like With they're not millions going, and millions of dollars. Let not, them drink yeah, a beer. Exactly. They're not going to hold up the teddy bears and the rainbows for your kid like, all the time. They're not. They're not in. They're not being video clubbed in the nightclub. <laughs> yeah. Nightclubs doing lines of coke. <laughs> you know, they're chugging a beer at an Indians baseball game. Yeah. Like I'm not a big fan of Baker, but the dude's a 26 year old exactly. who's making about 50 million dollars exactly. a year. Let him yeah. let him chug a couple. Beers. I always thought that too, and it, it made me. It reminded me of when I was thinking about that point with Russell being in a situation where I'm just curious if we'll ever hear. So when he leaves the Seahawks eventually, mm-hmm. will it ever come back to at some point where, for like they did with Aaron Rodgers, where former teammates speak out and they're like, "Well, this one time in the locker room, that he dude went, was a jerk. He went <laughs> off on us, and he said some things that I will never repeat, and blah blah blah." And then then you know. Pete right. Carroll piles on like if only you guys knew the Russell Wilson that I knew and not the one that was portrayed by the media. Now I don't necessarily buy, here. I don't know if I would buy into all that, right. but it's going to be curious to see. I think every like if you make over a certain amount of money, this is kind of double a double standard for me now. Uh, but if you make over a certain amount of money and you're in the public eye, you should be required after you retire to kind of divulge why you like <laughs> why did you leave seattle russ well there was this and there was this and there was this you know like we us us common folk want to know why james harden gained 40 pounds to get out of houston yeah well sir <laughs> yeah. well we put that one together i think but, but circle <laughs> yeah then that'd be a classic <laughs> what if i told you that james harden put the 50 pounds on and then lost it in two days Here's the story. Right. Now, uh, with uh, with Russ, though, it's going to be either either mm-hmm. or. We're going to hear, yeah, there'll be a documentary yeah. about it someday. Absolutely. That he was either exactly like the media portrayed him, perfect saint guy, but, you know, in, in the locker room mm-hmm. and everything, too, great teammate guy. Or it was, well, everyone's come forward, and here's what he actually said and did and all this. But I will say this. Keep your eye on the Raiders. Keep your eye on the Cowboys, potentially. I know that it's probably a long shot. But the Raiders seem like pretty heavy hitters here for a potential change. They don't trust Derek Carr. I mean, I know that they say they do, and he had a decent season last year, but he's not the guy. And by the way, they have to compete against Justin Herbert and Patrick Mahomes for the foreseeable future. They got to do something. Anyone, like, willing to be bald, you should not trust. (laughs) 
that's Derek Carr. Uh, anyone that wants, like, anyone that doesn't have a haircut snafu to go bald, <laughs> like, if you choose to be bald, don't trust him. The guy that looks like a spitting image Can't of trust the guy from Toy Story. Yeah, remember remember the, the Toy Story kid? You mean that happy child? Yeah, you put up the side by side. Like that is that is Derek Carr as a child. Yeah, awesome. I don't believe that man just, ever went to medical school. Keep your <laughs> keep your eye on those two teams. I'm telling you right now. It could be Chicago though. But no JJ Watt going to they Arizona. Could, they couldn't. Way out and of the And I know left you field. were about to pull that I know I knew you were about to say that yeah. because we talked about the teams of JJ Watt. That's right. And we could be sitting here being like, Oh maybe just, maybe he'll go to the Jets. That's what I was gonna say. We were gonna say Raiders, Cowboys, and then in two weeks the he'll Dolphins. go to like Carolina yeah yeah in two weeks Carolina where Miami's like guess what we just right. did Russell Wilson. some like super he goes to like Atlanta yeah, yeah. you know some out of the out of the, the <laughs> left field type anybody's of in play except and I would be willing to put as much money as you can imagine on this the Chicago Bears are not in play. I promise you, they are not. The fact that he even said that right. is just a waste of breath for it's everybody. A, so it's like a divergent. Yeah, exactly. No, he's not. Going it was just a fun little agent trick there to get everybody in Chicago excited, even though they know better. Uh, when we come back here on the afternoon sports drive, we'll tell you what we learned to round out this Monday live from Furniture Showcase. Back after this. Feel like I'm gonna puke because my taxes are due. Do my password begin with a one or a two? Been a hell of a ride. But I'm thinking it's time to grow. Metronome. Man, I'm up to something. Ooty la di do. Thank you all for coming. I hope you like the show because it's on a budget. Welcome back in Afternoon Sports Drive, Triple Play Sports Radio Network. Yeah, we're fixing to buzz off. We're fizzing the fizzing the buzz. We're fixing the buzz right off and out of here. Yeah, it's been a good show. It's been a great show. Man. It's been a quick show. I don't know about you, but I feel like the it two hours have really by flown by. When we're here at Furniture it's for the some comfortability It factor. is. That's it. Because I've been... If you're miserable and you're hot and you're sweaty and mm-hmm. you're sitting in an uncomfortable chair, mm-hmm. time drags. I've been chilling, mad chilling. Chilling like a villain? Mad, big, Throwing big ups, chilling over yeah. here in this chair. Hundo P over there, Hundo buddy. P, comfortable uh, as you... It, it's bloody fresh to death. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking, how much more can I say here about this? Oh, yeah. Uh, no, this chair, I'm telling you, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. It looks really, I like that gray. Let's see if I walk out of here with it and see if they notice. I like it's that fair. gray. Yeah, I know. The color is awesome, too. That's a slick looking gray. It's my little uh, throne over here. And it's got the fancy, like the, the push tacks yep. all the way around it. Oh, man. That's why it feels Does fancy. it have armrests? Yeah, oh, it does. Wow, that's nice. I know. Has everything you want. That's nice. That's nice. I know. You need a footrest. That's what I was about to say. Get you a little. Get you. you know. an, get you an ottoman yep. you can carry around. Mm, that's perfect. What a treat. Live here, at furniture showcase. We're gonna tell you what we learned here on this Monday. The day is coming to an end. Time to find out if these two got any smarter. Let's find out what the guys learned today on the afternoon sports drive. Well, well, I learned something today. All right, so what I learned here on this Monday was that uh, Alex Smith is is not coming back to the Washington football team. Mm. Um, and I'll say this, Zach, I'm okay with the move. Sure. Believe it or not, I'm okay with it. Now, Alex Smith, as we know, incredible. The fact that he stepped back on the field is just unbelievable. Uh, the most deserving of all time. They should rename the comeback player of the award, uh, award of, the, uh, of the year to him. You know, it should be his uh, for what he did. And, and just the fact that he's able to – and not just get on the field. You know, he threw for, what, six touchdown passes. Uh, he had eight, eight interceptions. And yeah, he was, I was going to say, one of a few ball games, didn't right, he? Right, and, well, and first play of, the, of his return uh, was a first play or first series, whichever one it was. There's one of those first where he takes the shot from Aaron Donald, and it was like – Everyone, the whole country just held their breath. They're like, oh, please no. And that right there is one reason why he can't come back. Now, I think he'll, he was still, he says he wants to play. He'll be 37 in May. So the age is also getting up there a little bit. Someone will sign him. Someone will sign him. He'll make a a good clipboard holder. But the (laughs) Chicago, yeah. He'll have the best job in the NFL. (laughs) Backup quarterback, make a couple mil. The Bears are saying, hmm, Nick Foles, Mitch Trubisky. Alex Smith. Pay him, pay him in deep dish. <laughs> That's right. We will pay you in deep dish pizza. Uh, but I, I, it makes sense because Washington looks at this and goes, all right, guys, we're no longer a shoe away team. We have a defense that we really believe in. We have a possible young stud 
in Antonio Gibson at running back. He was really good this year. T, uh, Scary Terry McLaurin is a beast. We would love to be able to add pieces. They found Logan Thomas, and he was great at the tight end spot late down the stretch. Now they just need to figure out who's going to be quarterback, and they have a chance. I, I know it's a, probably a rare one, but still, any teams up for grabs right now? Deshaun Watson could land over there. They Russell could even Wilson. Russell Wilson. They could even go over there and get uh, Sam Darnold if they wanted. Imagine Russell Wilson to Dallas, Dak to Washington. Oh yeah, he had filthy. The Cowboys would never, <laughs> ever, yeah, yeah, never leave him in the division. <laughs> yeah, he would not, not, uh, not happen. So I, I think that they see this as like, hey. We got to get pretty serious about, and then there's been a lot of mock drafts that have them have him, uh, the Washington football team, trading up to get Mac Jones, which would be super interesting with that offense. Uh, you know, you bring in a wide receiver and all that, and of course you have Taylor Heineke signed as a, as a backup, anyways. So, and he showed that he has what it takes. Uh, to maybe give you some decent minutes every now and again. So that too. But I just think I love Alex Smith, man. I don't want anyone to freak out like, oh man, how could they do this? Don't 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 uh, do this to Alex Smith. He should be coming back. He'll find a spot. But everybody also knows, and I said it this past year, that Washington was taking a huge chance bringing him back. Like it, it worked out about as well as they yeah. could have asked for it to work out, even with his numbers. The fact that he stayed healthy, because I'm telling you, as you know, He's one bad hit away from I don't know what happens. And I, I mean, that's right. That's to the leg, man. I'm telling you, if I'm him, I'm calling it a career. And I know it has to be so tough yeah. with being a football player like he is and has been all his life to hang it up now. I get it. It's tough. And you feel like you have more to give, but you don't have anything left to prove. I mean, you, you could go in and be, a, I guess, a backup on a contender if you could swing that or something and say you could grabbed a ring. But you don't have anything else to prove, man. I love Alex Smith to death. I love what he's done. His, his story will never, ever go away. It's one that we'll be talking about for, for the rest of time in sports. But I understand what Washington had to do here. They realized they've got mm-hmm. the pieces needed to be a complete team or at least get to that, uh, get to that point. They're just a quarterback away. So they're going to be one of the more interesting teams to follow. Uh, for who they grab a quarterback, but I hope Alex Smith finds what he's looking for. Absolutely. So I learned uh, about a commitment. Oklahoma State yeah. lands a top 50 prospect uh, in the 2021 class. Kendall Daniels, a safety out of Beggs, actually the number four safety in the country, um, requested his release from his LOI uh, from A&M last week. Come to find out the the analyst that helped bring him in uh, left A&M, which is uh, it's kind of a weird reason to leave a school that – uh, you, you have an analyst that helps recruit you and help you helps bring you to a university and then he leaves. But once you once you're on campus, once you're signed to an LOI, an analyst can't have contact with players. So it's not like that analyst would have been a, a different makes a difference maker anyway. But I'm not complaining. Uh, Kendall Daniels, the number four safety in the country, a top 50 uh, top 50 prospect, four star out of Beggs. Um, really, really, really talented. Uh, 120 tackles this past year, seven sacks, four picks, um, holding 38 passes for 648 yards, 10 touchdowns. Um, he's a, a multi-all-stater. He was the the 2A7 MVP, um, uh, an All-American. That's the the for, formerly of you know the Army All-American game. Um, really, really talented. So he uh, he signed actually signed today. He committed, uh, signed his uh, letter of intent this afternoon. Uh, he is officially a member of uh, the Oklahoma State football staff, uh, Oklahoma State football team, uh, a player that has a chance to make an impact much sooner rather than later. Like, oh, the, like he is now the fourth um, out of the top eight players in the state of Oklahoma to sign with Oklahoma State this year. Um, and there's some really talented. He's the seventh defensive back, and of all the talented defensive backs they've signed he has a chance to play sooner than everyone else. So um, huge, huge pickup from yeah. Mike Gundy. Yeah, it's a great get, man, no yeah. doubt. I, I uh, listened to Robert talk about that today. That's that's awesome for Oklahoma State football. Uh, yeah, I mentioned that tweet you sent me there, too, at the end of the show here yeah. real quick. With, uh, yeah, J.J. Watt, the report for the New York Post, said his first criteria was he wanted to play with Kyler Murray. Did you see the picture Kyler Murray put up That's on his Twitter? That's what I was Twitter? about to say. He has yeah. the picture of Kyler Murray back in his senior year of high school with J.J. Watt. That's is, That's got to feel like a dream yeah. come true and or weird, too, a little bit. It's like Probably wow. a little both. Uh, you know, and I get it, right? J.J., I mean, uh, Kyler, 
23 years old, and he's the first player in NFL yeah. history to throw for over 7,500 yards, 45 touchdown passes, and rush for 15 touchdowns. Dude is awesome. He's going to be great in the NFL, but but come on, J.J., Dude, JJ, you got you got paid a lot of money. Yeah, JJ, I, I understand you want to play with Kyler Murray, but but he was you really because you got paid. Yeah, he was you really number because one. Of Kyler. I love you, JJ, but come on now, you if, just got guaranteed twenty three million. At if 32. Kyler played for the New York Jets, and New York was only willing to pay eighteen million guaranteed, you would go somewhere that paid you. Oh, so like, like if if Kyler played for the Jets and they were willing to guarantee eighteen, and Chicago was willing to guarantee twenty one, twenty two. He would go to Chicago. So the Jets uh, guaranteed him 23. He would come out and say, I'm just number one with Sam Darnold. I like, wanted to play with Sam Darnold for ever me. since I watched him play at USC. He, we had this picture back in high school. He was so good. Us now. Look at that jawline. <laughs> How would you not want to play for that jawline? Me line? and Quinn and Williams, we're going to ball out. Yeah. Yikes. That jawline. <laughs> I want to learn how to come back from mono. I mean, yeah. he's the, Look at those cheekbones. He's the guy that can yeah. teach me how to do it and see ghosts at the same time. I uh, love you, Sam Darnold. This has been the Afternoon Sports Drive on the Triple Play Sports Radio Network. Big thank you to Levi back in studio. You can catch his show tonight, 8 o'clock, on the Triple Play Sports Radio Network, and he'll break down everything Oklahoma State has going on and I'm sure much more in the world of sports as they tip off at 8 p.m. round two of Bedlam tonight on ESPN. For Zach Lancaster, I'm Patrick Wheeler. We'll see you tomorrow.